Okay, everybody, it's 10 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started this morning. Thank you for joining us. My name's Zach Peterson, and I work with the Office of Information Technology and the Training and Communications team. And today, I'm going to go over with you during this remote work uh, training day that we're offering for y'all, um, box cloud storage. So I know it's been uh, it's been kind of crazy these past few days, but uh, we're working very hard to make sure that you have all the resources you need to um, make sure that you can work remotely effectively if you need to. And uh, also just a quick reminder, this 10 o'clock hour, uh, the first half hour, I'm going to go over box. And then at 1030, I'm going to start going over Zoom, the video conferencing solution that we have here on campus as well. So stay tuned on this meeting uh, to learn more about that if you are interested. So let's go ahead and go over the agenda for what I'd like to go over with you today. Uh, of course, the uses for Box, what do you actually use it for? Also logging in to Box if you haven't done so before, as well as the interfaces that are available for you to access Box. Not only is this accessible in your web browser, no matter what browser you use, basically uh, pretty much all browsers play nicely with Box. You also have desktop and mobile applications you can utilize uh, when you are um, using Box um, that's available for iOS, Android, as well as Windows and Mac. Uh, so you can access all of your Box files no matter where you are. Uh, also, we'll go over some of the file management, how to create folders, how to share folders with folks, as well as how to edit documents with others. That's another really cool feature. And also, the uses for Box, which are, of course, the most common ones that we have across campus, are uh, general file storage, just a place to keep things. Uh, also, team and group collaboration. I'll show you a little bit of that in a bit to where we can actually create Word documents or spreadsheets and actually collaborate with multiple people at the same time in the same document, which is really cool. And also, there's an option for departmental storage that can be requested if an entire department needs one particular um, storage storage space for all of their files. So those are some uses. And also, um, before I get started too much in our uh, uh, Q&A or our to-do for today, uh, just go ahead, if you have any questions during this uh, particular uh, event, please go ahead and click on the Q&A button inside of your Zoom client. That will allow you to send a question over to my colleague, Ian Aberly, who will be able to field those questions. If he's not able to, we'll go over them at the end of this uh, particular uh, session after we're done with this uh, show and tell, basically. So let's go ahead and I'm going to click, or go to get out of my presentation here, go to my web browser. In this case, I'm going to go to Firefox. Of course, you can use any browser that you are most comfortable with. And the website that you want to go to is going to be smu.edu slash box. And it will take you to this page here, which of course right here at the very top has a login page where you click on this login button and it will have you log in with your SMU ID and password. But I do want to make you aware of some more information that is available to you on this service page. If you scroll down a bit, there's the uh, getting started just on how to log in, things like that. There's some video tutorials as well as printed tutorials and instructions on how to use particular features in Box, as well as over here on the right-hand side, we do have some blog posts uh, related to Box. If you are uh, using Linux um, when you're working remotely, uh, there is a really good article on how to connect your Box account to Linux, so you can actually have access to all of your files there, so make sure to make note of that if you utilize that. But for most of the time, you're just going to be clicking on the Login button, and then you will uh, be able to log in with your ID and password. And keep in mind, you'll need to use the Duo app on your phone or on your landline phone if you have it set up that way in order to access the system. So once you log in, you will get a page that looks something like this. Of course, your folders will then show up. And let's go ahead and check this right quick. All righty. All right, so uh, this uh, is the, uh, the default box homepage that you will get. By default, it will show all of your folders that you have access to. You'll notice that the folders are different colors. What does that mean? So the regular manila folders here, like the one that I have my cursor right next to, that just means that I have access to it and no one else at the moment. The blue ones with the little silhouettes of two folks in there. That means that I have shared this folder with other people or someone has shared that folder with me. So just keep that in mind. That's an easy way to tell who has access to what. 
And in these folders, you also have an updated column. So you can see who has updated that particular folder and when, which can really come in handy. Also, uh, if you ever need to share any kind of folders, there is, if you hover over any a folder here, you'll see on the right-hand side, you do get a share button. And so when you hit the share button, it will allow you to share any folder with uh, folks within the university if you add email addresses things like that or if you need someone outside of SMU to access a folder you can actually turn on a shared link and you can set it to just folks in your company have access to that link or just people that have the link anybody um, and then you can also change the view and download settings for that as well also, one thing I want to let you know here on this main screen is that on the left-hand side, no matter what you're doing, uh, you will have the option to add favorites. No matter where you are, no matter what folder you have access to, you can add favorites, which will then always show up here on the left-hand side. So if there is a folder that's buried deep within a departmental folder or some other folder that you need to have access to, you can set that favorite and it will always be there so you can just access it with one click just like that there we go so there's my webinar or my powerpoint that i used this morning so anyway now let's go ahead and within this folder i'm just going to go ahead and create a brand new folder so to do that i'm just going to go go up here and you'll see this new button and you have several options for you first you have a folder if you want to create a blank folder then you also have bookmarks. You can bookmark to web pages and things like that for reference. You also have BoxNote. What is that? BoxNote is a basic word processing tool that can be used totally inside of your browser. And multiple people can be in the same document at the same time, typing things, commenting, marking things up. It's really, really cool. I'll show you that here in a bit. Also, we do have on the fly, you can create Word, PowerPoint, Excel documents, which I see folks use quite a bit. And also we have Google Docs and Google Sheets. I don't see that too much here at SMU since we don't utilize Google primarily, but that is available to you if you do use that for any reason. So for right now, I'm just gonna create a folder really quick. So I'll click on that folder and now it will have me name this folder. And during this phase, you can also invite additional people to view this uh, folder. So I'm going to go ahead and invite my colleague, Ian. And it will suggest folks to you. So I'll click that here. And I'll make him an editor. You can also change the permissions. So if you don't want them to be able to upload or edit things, you just want them to be able to view the documents in that folder, you can set, the, set that person to be a viewer or to upload files and not do anything else. You can set them as an uploader. So there's several different ways you can uh, set permissions. I'm just gonna make Ian an editor since I trust him for that. And I'm gonna click Create. And just like that, there is my shared folder and you'll see that folder is blue. So that tells me that it is shared. So uh, let me go in real quick and I'm gonna show you this more options icon whenever you are in a folder uh, row, whenever you have your cursor hovering over that. You do have some options if you wanted to change those permissions at any time later on. You can go to the share options there and you can remove folks from access for that folder or add folks. You can download the entire folder as a zip file. That's really handy if you just need to get everything out of that folder onto your desktop ASAP. And there's that add to favorites option. So let me go ahead and I'll add this one. And you'll see this test webinar folder now shows up in my favorites here on the left hand side so I can refer to it at any time. Pretty cool. So also in that more options are a few other settings as well as more whoops, there we go, more actions to put it in the trash or rename the folder, managing the permissions again. And then there's a few other options as well there, but those are your most used. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna go into that folder I just made. Ah, Ian made us a note. Let's go ahead and click into this note so I can show you how Box Notes works. So this is our Box Notes client. And look at that. There's me right there and there's Ian right there. What happens if I scroll down here? Oh, there I go. So I move lower down into the document and I can type and then Ian can go in and type 
anything he wants as well. So, uh, and this can have, I've had documents, box notes that people are working in, see, there you go, uh, that 10 people are working in at the same time. Uh, and it works really, really smoothly. All the updates are synced up immediately. It's a really good way, especially for meeting minutes. I found this is extremely useful where people can update the meeting minutes, paste links to different documents, things like that. Uh, it's really, really helpful for that. And it's all updated live on everyone's screen. So there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. So that is the box note feature. And always from here, you can set uh, comments. Like if I wanted to mark this up and if I highlighted something and I wanted to add an annotation and then post that. It is now set as an annotation, as you can see, and when you hover over it, or whenever anyone hovers over it, it will show that particular annotation. And up here in the top right, I can go and make comments on this box note. Let me just put something in here. And then post that and then folks can reply and comment on that particular document without actually typing inside the document itself. As always, in most word processors, you do have the ability to format your text in different sizes up here at the very top. You have your title, subtitle, body. There's not as many size options and stuff as Microsoft Word, but it does work for really quick notes. That's where it really comes in handy. You have strike through if you want to strike, uh, strike out things for edits and uh, alignment as well as your basic checklists and numbered lists. That's actually one thing I really do want to show you is if I highlight multiple lines and use this checklist option, it will make little check boxes that can then be checked off. So again, for meetings, uh, for, uh, at the end of the meeting notes, if you wanna take a, wanna add a next steps section for tasks that need to be done, this is really, really handy for uh, getting that put together. Okay, so, and also here on the left-hand side, you might be wondering, it does show you a history of the notes that you've worked with previously across all of your folders in Box. So if you're working in a lot of Box notes at the same time, that comes in handy when you can switch back and forth um, frequently with uh, very little friction going back and forth. So, okay, let me go ahead. Whoopsie, stop sharing my screen. There we go. So, let me go back here. I was trying to click my tabs here. And there we go. So now, let me go back here in my box folder. And here inside of this folder, we can always add more files and things like that. Let me show you how easy that can be. So on my desktop, I have had some uh, different folders that I have put together. Let me move over here. Sorry, my screen's a little smaller on my laptop here, but I have this audio folder on my screen, and let's say I just want to upload that whole thing. Yes, I could just go to upload here in box and go to folder and upload the whole folder at the same time. To upload a single file, you would select file and go through your file explorer or your uh, finder window on a Mac. But the easiest way is to just go to my audio folder or whatever folder I have, wherever it's located, and click and drag into box. And just like that, it keeps the entire folder structure so I don't have to totally reorganize all the stuff that I just uploaded and it will then upload that whole folder, and since I have shared this parent folder, this test folder with Ian, he automatically gets access to this folder inside. So I click on that, and just like that, all of the files that were in that folder, they didn't move, they didn't change order, everything's there the way I made it in the folder, which can come in real handy if you're more used to creating folders and organizing folders in your on your computer, uh, either your PC or your Mac. You can just create it the way you want it to be organized, click and drag it into box, and there it is. You're good to go. Pretty awesome. So that is the way to upload in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and I'm going to show you something really quick that um, is also very helpful for collaboration, much like BoxNote. So if I go to new here and I create a Word document, I get to name this document. I'm gonna do just test doc here and click create. 
What it's going to do is it's going to create that test document. And what it's actually going to do right now is it's going to open it in Word automatically. How did it do that? So the, uh, there are some box applications that are available to you on uh, any computer that you want. Like I mentioned earlier, you can download uh, the box apps on the box website and I'll show you a place to go uh, real quick and it's called box edit and that allows you it allows box rather to uh, open files from box on your computer as if they were actually on your computer the one drawback to this is that you cannot work in collaboration with multiple people on these documents when you have them open in the desktop word app on your computer how do you collaborate with multiple people I will show you. Let me go ahead and quit Word here. Close this out. And in that document that I just made, I'll click on it here. And it will show you right off the bat a preview, which of course there's nothing in it right now. And there's also a way that you can comment on particular files here on the right hand side, uh, just like in the box notes and things like that. But what I want to show you is if I go to this open button up here at the top, there are, there are a couple of different options. First is what just happened. It opens Word on your desktop. But the second option is what I really want to show you. Microsoft Word Online. If I click on that, make sure your pop-ups are allowed here. There we go. It will pop up Word Online. Just an online version of Word in your browser. And what can happen now, just like in Box Notes, is that multiple people can now go into this document and make edits to this document. So I'm just gonna go ahead, we'll see how quick Ian is if he's <laughs> if he's gonna go into this document here. But uh, you can edit, it's not the full featured Microsoft Word, but again, it's very, very uh, useful if you wanna have multiple people working in a Word document at the same time. You also noticed earlier when I was creating those documents or creating a new document that there was also, there he is, <laughs> that there was also an option to create an Excel spreadsheet. We, uh, that will also, <laughs> yes, I want you to work in. Uh, you can also create spreadsheets and work on those um, remotely or from wherever with multiple people at the same time. And it makes, uh, makes working on group projects, that kind of thing, a lot easier, especially if you're wanting to cross check different spreadsheets with folks and uh, you want to have someone start at the bottom of the spreadsheet and someone start at the top. I know I've done that before and check different rows for things you can work in that spreadsheet at the same time, but you have to use this Word Online feature or Excel Online. There is also a PowerPoint Online feature for you as well. So you can see, as Ian did earlier just a minute ago, you can work in it at the same time. So it makes it a lot easier for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and X that out real quick. And he can still be in the document when I leave it. So he can still work in it because he has the uh, ability, he has the permissions that I gave him. Also, every time you save a file uh, and you still have this preview window open from clicking on the document, uh, you do have the option to refresh the page. And if I click on refresh after it's been saved, it will now show me a preview, or an updated preview of what was in that document. And there we go. All right, so let me go ahead and I'll X out of that here. And right before I go to some questions, because I do see some questions, um, possibly Ian has been answering them, but I'll have to double check real quick. But uh, let me just go over a couple other things and then I'll go over some Q&A. Um, up here at the top toolbar, the cool thing about Box is that no matter how many files that you have, they are all very easily searchable. So if I go to that test doc up in that search bar, it will now show me everything relevant to that search term. Of course, I have a whole bunch of stuff going on that has to do with testing, so uh, I have quite a few results, but it's very good. It, it uh, searches through the body as well as the title of the documents, most documents. And uh, whenever you click on a document or a photo, a PDF, whatever it might be, it will, it does a pretty good job of showing you a preview so you don't even have to open it in a program if you don't want to. Also in this top row, we have uh, a support which is this little question mark icon. And so we do have information with documentation as well as a direct uh, printout for the uh, help desk number. They're happy to help you with it as well. You also have tasks. You can assign tasks to people within documents that will show up in this list. Also, you do have um, 
notifications. So if there's a shared folder that you're working in, you can have uh, notifications come up if someone else uploads a document or changes a document. Any of those updates will show up on this little bell icon. And then you have your uh, avatar or whatever headshot picture that you have. By default, it will just show your initials up here, but you can upload a photo if you wanted to by going to the view profile option. And there's a few other uh, options here, but the one I really wanted to show you was the apps option. And this is where you can go to download that box edit uh, program that I told you about. But another one that is even better, in my opinion, is Box Drive. And what that does, I'll just go to my desktop really quick, is that it will show you a um, particular box folder here on the uh, desktop whenever you log in and install it. That will allow you to view all of your box files and documents, folders and documents, on your file explorer or finder window on your computer just like they just like these files were sitting on your computer but they're not it's basically i've been calling it the netflix for documents because it actually uh, is able to uh, stream basically your documents to you which can come in handy especially if you're away from the office so that really in a nutshell is what i wanted to show you in regards to um box itself. Let me go back here. Let me open up my Q&A just so I can follow along. But Ian, are yeah, there... Exactly. Uh, we yeah. do have, sorry to jump in there. Yeah, we sure. do have several questions came up. Uh, I've answered a couple, uh, but I want to make sure that uh, some of those ones we hit again. Um, so can you uh, show again how to make a favorite? Absolutely. So in my box client here, let me go ahead, for example, on this document right here or on this folder actually, um, I will click on the more options button here. So whenever you hover over a particular file or folder, you click on more options and it will then show this drop down menu. Uh, it was looking a little weird there, hold on. Let me just go to this one. And it will show add to favorites. And once you click on that, it will refresh your favorites bar on the left-hand side here, and there it is. There's my audio folder, and that this left-hand toolbar will always stay there for you. So uh, it will be a great way to have quick access to stuff. So uh, that is that one. Um, what else okay. do we got, Ian? So we also have um, the um, somebody was asking about sharing files with people who do not have access to Box. Yes, that is 100% possible. You can actually. Um, share whenever you go to, let me minimize my thing right here. Sorry, I'm kind of reading and listening as I go along. So uh, the, uh, for based on the permissions and either by folder or by individual file, when you go to the share option here, you do have the option for this shared link. And if I enable that, uh, you do have this link that you can copy. By default, it is just for people that have access to SMU's box account. You can change that. So in this little link right here, you'll click, and here's the options that you have. So invited people only, so only people that you've specifically invited would have access to that link, or up here is people with the link. So that means it is publicly accessible to everyone worldwide if they wanted to they don't have to sign into box so if you do want that option uh, you can set that or in the invite people section you can add uh, external uh, email addresses and it should work fine for you and it will send an invitation to that person saying hey this person wants to share a file with you so and then of course for those invitations you can set them to either be able to edit or to view only. So we do that uh, for some of our internal reports here at SMU. We actually share them. We have a link that's available to that can, anybody can click on, but if you don't have an SMU password or an account, it will not work. So uh, we've changed that using these options. So that is how to go about that. So uh, okay. hope that answers that question. What else do we... Uh, do we have a student, uh, somebody asking about um, students can have access to Box in Canvas. Can they use the Box notes for team activities such as case studies? Yes. So uh, Box in Canvas um, or uh, 
students do still have that same access that a faculty member should have in uh, Canvas where they can click on box and it will uh, show their box folder that they can then share, create box notes that they can share with uh, a group project if they're uh, doing a group project to have meeting notes, something like that. Uh, or again, for like case studies, things like that, they can write notes together as a team. So yes, that is something that can be done for sure. Awesome. Uh, all right. Um, so can somebody was asking if you could go back to the screen where um, we see the uh, box of the application. So they're looking for the application screen. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. So um, if, to go to the app screen to download all the different apps, uh, you'll click up on the top right hand corner that either has your picture or your initials, usually your initials. And if I click on that, you go to this apps entry right here, click on that, and that will take you to the different uh, apps that are available to you uh, for Box. And another place on this screen that you can go to on the right-hand side are the official Box apps, and that will filter out some of the third-party apps that you have to scroll through and will just show you the official Box apps, which are the two that I, were ta I was talking about, the Box Edit, as well as the uh, Box Drive. To check if you have um, Box Edit and Box Drive already, they should be listed in your uh, Start menu on your Windows machine or on a uh, in the Applications folder on your Mac. There should be a Box option. If not, you can go to this page and you can then download and install those. Um, and also, um, for more reference, I know we're running a little short on time here before I have to go to my Zoom. Uh, tutorial, but uh, for more information, of course, you can go back to the smu.edu slash box page where we also have links to LinkedIn learning courses for box, which are really, really good. Um, so you can always refer back to that. And if you haven't used LinkedIn learning before, I it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> I can't say enough good stuff about it. So uh, go over there to smu.edu slash LinkedIn and log in with your credentials and it will give you a whole lot more courses, not just for box, but for all kinds of different software and professional development. So that's available to you. I also want to mention too, that LinkedIn Learning is good, but they're all, Box also does regular webinars for people yes. um, all the time, um, showing how to use the different pieces of Box and that's at their, on their events page. Excellent. Um, at box.com slash events slash webinars. All right, thank you for that. So uh, also, uh, let me go ahead. That really kind of wraps it up for, uh, this particular part of at this hour. Uh, if you want to stay tuned with Zoom, uh, feel free to stick around because it's gonna be on this same channel. I'm gonna take a quick break, but at 10.30, I'm going to start with getting started with Zoom. So thanks again, everybody. If uh, I didn't answer your question immediately, I'm still keeping the channel open right now, so Ian can uh, hopefully answer some of those for you or get in touch with you later on. But for right now, we're gonna take a quick break and we'll start getting started with Zoom at 1030. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Zach. And those who are still on, I will be going through and answering some of those questions in the chat. So we'll get those answered for you. <laughs> 